I wanna teach you five really important things about color in your raw workflow that you can start implementing today. I don't wanna waste any of your time, so I'm gonna jump right into it. The first thing I have for you is calibration is a better place to use saturation than the HSL or color mixer section of Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. I think that this is so important that I've actually put calibration underneath my basic settings because as the studies and research that I've done, I feel that that's what comes directly after the basic adjustments anyway. So the better place to start our color is actually in the calibration section than in the color mixer section. Now, I've done some videos on this before. You've probably heard me talk about it. There is not a lot of research that has been put out there about this calibration section. Actually, even on the Help X Adobe blog, you can't really find much of anything of substance that's going to help you about what this red primary, green primary, and blue primary does. But from what I've discovered, I feel like this is more about the bare matrix sensor and how it's broken down into red, green, and blue pixels. So this is essentially calibrating the data that is coming in from that RGB matrix sensor. That's, that's how I put it anyway. And when I think about it that way, it's actually a lot easier. And the reason why is because it's not targeting actual physical color. It is targeting groups of color based on how present that pixel value of red, green, or blue is in the color. Just to prove that, let's go down to our color wheel here. As we increase the saturation of red, you're going to notice that not only does the saturation of red increase over here, it also increases over here. And that's because there is red present in the green values, okay? Now, if we come over here, we do the saturation in the green, it's gonna increase the intensity on the opposite side of the color wheel. It's predominantly going to be focused on this side, but its cousins or its complements on the other side, it's also going to increase. This is very different than HSL, it's going to blue. Same thing, we see the intensity increase on this side of the color wheel because they are in direct relation with one another. There is a value of blue present in this yellow color over here. Now let's go over to HSL adjustment layer and I'll show you the difference. I keep calling it HSL, they call it color mixer now. If we go into the saturation, the only thing that is going to increase are blue colors, okay? That's because this is physically looking at the color blue and saying increase the saturation of blue. Whereas the, the calibration section is more, like, more than likely looking at the uh, bare matrix sensor data that comes in and giving you a different result when you increase that saturation. Let's put the proof in the pudding here. Let's go to this image here. If I were to go into the blue section here and increase the saturation, we get this gnarly, nasty, unworldly looking, unnatural looking blue for the blue hour in our sky. Now, if we go down to the calibration section or up to the calibration section, depending on where you have it in your workflow, we increase the saturation and look at that. We get this beautiful, gorgeous, natural looking blue increase. Now these will vary based on the image that you're working with. So don't take what I've just said here for face value. You're going to have to experiment. But the first place that you should reach if you're trying to increase the intensity of your color is going to be the calibration section versus the HSL or color mixer section. The second thing I have for you is actually about the color mixer. Now you might not know this, but in Photoshop, when you do a hue rotation for a given color, you can take that color on the opposite side of the color wheel. It can go from being red to being cyan in a matter of seconds. The difference here in the color mixer that we have in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom is if you go to the hue, and let's say we wanted to change the color of red, we can only go about maybe 15 degrees on each side of that color as we change that hue. Watch, we go to the red, we change the hue of the color red. Our color of red, if we look right here, we can move it this way, is going to get more towards the magenta color, shifting towards the magenta color. We move it to the right, it's going to shift towards the orange color, or all of the reds are gonna to shift towards the orange color. Likewise, if we go into blue, we can only get it slightly over into cyan, or slightly over into magenta by about a 15 degree movement. We cannot go all the way around the color wheel. There are some governors that are in place here in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom so that we don't do too many things to our photographs that we shouldn't be doing to our photographs. In a way, it's the micromanagement of our colors, or if you want to look at it in a positive way, it's a fail save so we don't do things that we shouldn't be doing. We'll save that for Photoshop. The third thing is that color is a lot easier to edit at the raw level than you would think. I prefer to use presets and profiles that have been predetermined to make my image look better based off of what I recorded into those profiles and presets. And as a shameless plug, I'm gonna show you that I have a new set of chroma profiles and presets. You see how I've worked that in here? Some might think that I made this whole video just so I could promote these profiles and presets and some might actually be correct. However, there still is some very strong value packed into this tutorial as well.
Now these profiles and presets are a unique way to work with your image so that you can transform any image really quickly and really beautifully right here at Adobe Camera Raw and get almost a finished looking product. So that when you bring this image into Photoshop, all of your colors are beautiful and vibrant and ready to work on and be taken to even the next level. Or if you don't wanna move on to Photoshop, you can have a really nice solid product finished right here in Adobe Camera Raw. How I do that is actually with a series of profiles and presets that talk to each other. These profiles target specific areas of color in your image to make them more vibrant, make them more rich, or exaggerate them over other colors. These profiles are LUT based, so they aren't doing anything to the settings in your image. And after you pick a LUT, you go through your presets and you find presets that are already pre laid out for the type of image that you're working on or the colors that you want to exploit. You can see that we really took this image to the next level using this more intelligent way to process our images. Tell me more, you say, okay, well, there are there are 23 profiles and 78 presets that are included in this Chroma Profile and Preset Pack. I know what you're thinking, another YouTuber trying to make bucket loads of money off of snake oil presets. That's not what these are. These profiles and presets actually took me over 18 months to create. I scrapped a lot of crap so that I could give you just the best of the best and actually develop a system for you for making better color in your images. Let's take a look at this image. This is before we use the Chroma Profiles and Presets. This is after the Chroma Profiles and Presets. And if you're wondering if this works with your own linear profiles, it does work with your own linear profiles as well. You'll just be using the presets instead of the profiles that I create for you. If you're wondering, hey, Blake, where do we get this amazing color wheel from? Well, it's also included in that profile and preset pack, and it comes with 11 videos that teach you color theory and how to make your own profiles and presets. All right, enough with my shameless plug. We're going to move on. The fourth thing that I want to teach you is that color grading actually happens at the end of the entire workflow stack. Or if you think about everything that happens at your raw level as being things that work on top of each other and what takes precedence, color grading is going to be at the very, very tippy top. Let's take a look at this image. If we turn this into a black and white photograph, press the black and white button. This is using some type of monochrome profile to change our image into black and white. If we go here, we see that this is now the black and white mixer. So if we make any adjustments here, it's not actually going to be adjusting our colors or make this image look more colorful. If we go into our calibration section, which actually did control color at one point, we are not actually manipulating the color in this image at all. We're manipulating the tonal data that is changing and shifting based on our adjustments to color data that's underneath. But if we come down to color grading and we look at something like our midtones and make them magenta, it's happening on the top of the entire stack. This is really important to understand because if you do use LUT based profiles, this is the only section that is not going to mingle underneath that LUT profile. It's actually going to be on top of the LUT profile because that black and white setting is essentially a black and white LUT that's placed on top of the entire workflow, except for color grading. So color grading stands on its own and it's on the top of the entire stack. The fifth and final thing I want to talk about is the curve. I've always avoided the curve in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom like the plague. And the reason why is because I typically work with curves in Photoshop and I don't really like the global adjustment that I get with the curves in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. I don't, I can't use blend modes. I can't use masking. I can't use blend if. So there's really not a whole lot of reason for me to use it in my workflow, or at least there wasn't until recently. As I was experimenting making the making the Chroma Intelligent Profiles and Presets, I stumbled upon a really clever way of using the RGB channels to manipulate my image. So typically this area is intimidating, specifically for new or beginners to Adobe Camera Raw or RAW processing. But if I go into the red section here and I increase this, it's going to make the image overall more red. If I bring it down, it's going to make it overall more blue. So I would just kind of come in here and I'd start moving this around. And I'm like, it's just not really working out very well for me. What I found is that there's a better way to manipulate this tone curve, specifically if you want to add colors to a given area in your image, and that's going to be using the targeted adjustment tool. And what I love about this targeted adjustment tool is that as I move around here, it shows me on the curve what part of the image I'm going to be modifying if I move it up and down. So if I go up here and I click and I want to make this just a little bit more red or maybe a little bit more blue in the highlights, I'll move it a little bit left and that'll make it a little bit more blue in the highlights. I get a lot more control this way than by trying to come over here and move this individually myself. Now let me go down to this area and let's see, I'm in the red channel here. So if I move this over, I can make the water maybe a little bit more red. I made the sky a little bit more blue and that's going to help the two of them kind of stand out a little bit. 
This is a very unique way of color grading our image, and I feel it's a better way of color grading our image than I was using the curves in here before because I wasn't using the curve in here before. <laughs> so if I click here, I can just click and drag to the left or drag to the right and start manipulating the green channel. And in the green channel, I can make it a little bit more magenta, maybe a little bit more green, uh, but that's on this individual point. So when I go into the highlight areas, as I move this to the left and to the right, you can see that our intensity and our color grading starts to get a little bit more accurate. Now I'll go to the blue channel and maybe I wanna make the blues a little bit more blue. So I'll move them to the left, which will increase them a little bit. Okay, that's in the highlight areas of the color blue, but let me go into the darker areas of the color blue, maybe make them a little bit more yellow to offset that. Here's our before, here's our after. Notice how the color in our luminance values is a little bit more intense and it actually appears really natural with very slow methodical movements of going left to right rather than trying to grab that, that curve and move it up and down because I always fail when I do that. So there you go, five things that you probably didn't know about Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom when it comes to color processing. If you did know any of these, mention it in the comments below. And if you're interested in those Chroma Intelligent Profiles and Presets, look in the description below this video and you'll find all the information that you need about how to get your hands on these amazing profiles and presets that I just finished creating. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.